Another one of our strange and unusual effects that we're using in our Spider-Man series is something that I found years ago when I was traveling with the Spike Jones Band in a deserted old warehouse at Wahlberg and Auger's music store in Worcester, Massachusetts. It's something we're going to use for our swarm sound for our bees in our upcoming Spider-Man series. <laughs> We've got all the voices and the sound effects and the music recorded on reels of film, but they haven't been put together yet. But not to worry, we've come to the right place, the editing department at Marvel Productions. Sound editors like Joe Syracuse complete much of their work before our animators draw a single picture. Joe has to carefully measure the length of every word and every beat of music. This is information the animators will need to make the pictures move to fit the sound. All that soundtrack information is written on timing sheets. Animation directors like Bob Richardson refer to timing sheets again and again, especially when it's time to match the words on the soundtrack with the motion of the character's lips. Every second of a motion picture is made up of 24 still pictures or frames. The animation director has to estimate how many drawings are needed to create the illusion of smooth, natural motion. Bob will do enough of these drawings himself so that other animators can complete the drawings that are needed in between. I think it goes through there pretty good and pretty smoothly. We have many different directors and animators working on our Spider-Man stories. That's why we need supervising director Don Jerwich to keep an eye on the whole operation. Among other things, Don makes sure that Spider-Man looks the same from story to story. The best way to check whether a character is moving the way it was planned is to do a pencil test. That is, to make a test animation of the unfinished pencil drawing. This gives us a black and white sneak preview of how the finished work will look. This one's where she comes around and the special effects painting on it will be beautiful. We'll have the oranges and you know, all the fire. And it's black and white tests. I'm always excited to see the color test. Did you know there's such a thing as male paint and female paint? Well, take it from me. In Hollywood, anything is possible. What I mean is, the paint we use to color our female characters are a little bit pinker than the males. Now, I learned that here in Marvel's ink and paint department. Each of the animator's pencil drawings must be copied onto a clear plastic sheet called a cell. Artists select from hundreds of colors and shades of paint. Each jar has been carefully mixed and numbered so we can find the same shade each time we look for it. The clear cells are painted on the back. That way, any mistakes can be easily scraped off and corrected. Did you notice that only a part of the complete picture appears on each cell? Often, several layers of cells are combined to make one finished picture. That way, the animator must only draw the parts that are supposed to move, without having to redraw the entire background, too. Here's where all our cells are combined with the right background, at the animation camera. Each cell has identical holes that fit onto precisely measured pegs on the camera table. That ensures that every picture is held in perfect position. Our animation camera is operated by John Burton. 
All we do is we follow all the director's and artist's instructions on the sequence of their drawings, how they're to be photographed, and in what order. What we're talking about in the still photography on motion picture film is the pictures I take one at a time when they're run through a projector at 24 frames a second, that's when it comes to life. The shot we chose to work on today was a relatively simple scene. But in the Spider-Man series, we do have some very complicated scenes where we stack multiple exposures one on the other. And you can get through a scene of, uh, say, 200 exposures, and you have to match frame all 200 of them five times with various special effects. You get into the fifth run, and you make a mistake. That means you go back to frame one and you start all over again. Much of the creative work we do is done right here near Hollywood, but there's so much work to do to make an animated show, we have to send it all over the place. Now here in Utah, we do our storyboard layouts. Then a lot of the animation is done here in Korea, after which we segue way across the globe to London where we do our music. We then go back again very often to Japan for more animation. Whew. Then finally, we're back home to Los Angeles where we mix it all together. If you can make it to the tunnel, it's a clean getaway. Beautiful, I can hardly see. This is the audio mix, where the finished picture is combined with as many as ten different soundtracks. Each of these soundtracks contains voices, music, or sound effects. And if we're going to hear them all on TV, they must be combined at just the right volume. Let that ring off there's plenty there you know where the where the mm. cans are hit yeah let it continue on even after he sits up we'll just figure in the background that a can has fallen over the other way your windshield the war floor the weather tank just your friendly neighborhood spider-man turn there <laughs> no there should wait a minute there's just more your friendly <laughs> It's taken more than a hundred people over six weeks to transform our Spider-Man story from a written script into an animated cartoon. And at last, it's finished. Congratulations, just look what you've done. Congratulations, aren't you the clever ones? Congratulations, cause something new has begun. Cause Spider-Man's on his web and off the wall. Hey, we call this a rap party because we've just wrapped up the work on our first few episodes of Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Now, I want to say hi to some of my amazing friends, but don't go away. I want to talk a bit more with you, too. Spider-Man on the move. We'll now back to Spider-Man on the move. To tell the truth, when I first came to Los Angeles, I had no idea it would take so much work to make Spider-Man move. But Marvel Productions is an exciting place to work. Everywhere I look, I see writers and artists turning their daydreams into real TV shows. That's not so different from growing up, from learning the skills you need to make some of your own dreams come true. Thanks for joining me. <laughs>